On the road to Zabadani, it feels like we're entering a war. We see only army checkposts. Then this, civilians, the first we meet. What these people down here have just told us is that they're fleeing, they're running away. They haven't got any possessions with them. They don't have a car either. They're just getting out of town as fast as they can. Further on at the front line, more people fleeing. We cross to the anti-government side, follow Arab League monitors through twisting streets into the town center. Little can prepare them or us for the welcome we receive. Thousands of anti-Assad protesters. The crowd have gone absolutely wild. Now the monitors have arrived, even carrying them on their shoulders here. They're treating the monitors as if they are gods. They've been sent here to save them. Bitter anger against the government is everywhere. Two or three people have been killed, she says, more than 60 wounded. And now for the last three days, she adds, water, electricity and phones have been cut off. They are striking anything in the, in the, uh, in the street. In the street, kill people, uh, isolation people. Can you understand me? We, we don't need this regime. Can you understand me? They are killing us. Inside the nearby mosque, Arab League monitors use the calm to take down more details. This man tells us he was shot going out to get bread, has lost a finger. His brother, he says, killed. In this mountain town, close to the border with Lebanon, military defectors, now with the Free Syrian Army, say they have 70 lightly armed fighters. We don't see them, but the monitors do. After more than an hour, as the monitors inch their vehicles through the crowds, more and more press forward. They don't want the monitors from the Arab League to go, telling them soldiers will use their tanks to fire on the town as soon as they leave. In apparent desperation, the crowd turns on the monitors, beats their car, begins to throw rocks, forcing them to drive a dangerous road towards frontline troops not expecting them. Gunshots fired. Monitors stop, wave their orange jacket to show who they are. Half a mile, 800 meters ahead, the road is blocked. It is the Syrian government front line. We are forced to stop. It is not a safe place to be. The monitors are trying to shout out to the soldiers on the other side of the front line there to clear the road, to clear the barricade. It's clearly a road that's not used often now. The soldiers over there seem to be very nervous. They won't let the monitors cross. As we wait, soldiers bring out one of their dead, say he's just been shot. They shout at the camera, film, film, is this the freedom you want? Is this what the world wants? Is this the Syria you are looking for? Around us, the soldiers are edgy, occasional shots ring out. Finally, after an hour and a half in the danger zone, a digger is brought forward, two soldiers riding shotgun. They begin clearing the barricade. Gunfire erupts. Not clear who is shooting. Soldiers run for cover. The monitors race for safety. Pass plenty of armored vehicles with heavy machine guns. Twenty seconds later, they stop at the front line army base. Soldiers cheer the president. Then this. 
An unprovoked attack on the monitors. As they drive out, they leave behind a city under siege. Nick Robertson, CNN, Zabadani, Syria.